welcome to our channel in this lesson i want us to discuss uh, chemistry practical and the concept that you are going to discuss here is uh, in organic analysis uh, this one you usually call it a uh, test for cations and anions uh, remember uh, chemistry practical carries a uh, 40 percent which means each mark is one percent so that gives you now a uh, 40 percent meaning you need to put more weight or more emphasis on the practical now test for cations and anions it usually forms question two and this one carries about uh, 12 marks i usually call it a uh, 12 free marks uh, the students will have the concept involving in their fingertips now inorganic analysis involves test for cations and anions now for the student to obtain good results they must be able to, number one, accurately identify the various test reagents that are used. Now, when you are given the paper and you have known that that question is testing for cations and anions, you must be able to understand uh, which reagents are used for which test. Like now, some of the reagents that you usually use for, test, uh, for testing cations and anions is uh, sodium hydroxide, aqueous ammonia, uh, lead nitrate, a barium nitrate and so on so you must be able to identify the various test reagent number two you must be able to identify what these reagents test that is sodium hydroxide what does it test aqueous ammonia what does it test lead nitrate what does it test barium nitrate what does it test you must be able to understand that and then after doing so you must be able to predict the expected observation uh, once you use sodium hydroxide to test a certain uh, sample, then you must be able to understand or you must be able to predict the ex expected observation. Will you get a white precipitate, soluble in excess, or will you get no white precipitate, or will you get white precipitate in soluble in excess, uh, such thing. Now, usually, the basic test for gases include smell, smell of the gas. There are those gases that have a pungent, uh, choking smell. Ah, yeah, you must be able to identify the color of the gas. There are those gases that are colorless. Others have uh, green, yellow, like chlorine gas. Another one, brown, like nitrogen oxide. And then effect on moist litmus paper. The word here is moist, meaning it should have uh, uh, moisture. Right? So there are those gases that uh, turn a moist blue litmus paper to red. So meaning those gases are acidic. They are those that turn a moist uh, red litmus paper to blue, meaning those gases are basic. So the other basic tests include action on lime water. Like you know, carbon dioxide uh, is tested by passing it through lime water, that's calcium hydroxide, uh, for a short while, and therefore it forms a white uh, precipitate. From there, you need to know uh, preliminary tests, which usually include a uh, number one flame test, Number two, heating of soil in a test tube or a boiling tube, and that is a thermal decomposition or thermal uh, dissociation. And then the third one is uh, solubility of the solid in water. Preliminary test means you cannot uh, identify or you cannot confirm the presence of a certain cation or an ion in a sample in a sample by using this preliminary test. This one just gives you uh, a basic uh, foundation of the test that you are going to carry out. Now, to start with the flame test, this one is usually used to identify the presence of a cation. Cation means a positively charged particle in a solid or a solution sample. A flame test is usually done by using a spatula or you can use uh, a nichrome wire. The procedure is uh, you heat a half spatula full of solid K, just an example, using a non-luminous flame. So you take the solid, you scoop it using a spatula, and then you heat it uh, using non-luminous flame. So the observation that you make, that is now the flame test. The flame test now that you make here depends on the cation present in that sample. So expected observation here can be solid bonds with a yellow flame, so the inference conclusion becomes sodium ion present. Why? Because sodium salts burn with a yellow flame. Now, or it can be solid burns with a lilac, that is purple flame. The cation present here is a potassium ion. Or solid burns with a red flame. The cation present here is a calcium ion. 
or solid burns with an apple green flame. The cation present here is barium ion. Solid burns with a blue green flame. The cation present here is a copper two ion. Or solid burns with scarlet flame. Scarlet means dark red flame. So the cation present here is a lithium ion. Next is the heating of a solid in a test tube or a boiling tube. The salt which is heated here in the boiling tube or the test tube may either be heated gently, that is thermal dissociation, or strongly, that is thermal uh, decomposition. Heating of the solid gently, it involves a removal of water of crystallization from a salt. Now, simple procedure, you place a spatula of solid K, just an example, in a test tube or a boiling tube, and then you heat it gently. So we said when you are heating a solid uh, gently, uh, what you are trying to remove is what? Is you are removing water of crystallization. Now, what is the expected observation? The expected observation will be a colorless liquid is formed on the cooler part of the test tube or the boiling tube. The inference conclusion becomes hydrated salt present. Usually, we reject when the candidate or when the student writes a colorless liquid condenses. Remember, a liquid does not condense. So the correct observation here is should be colorless liquid forms on the cooler part of the test tube. Now, we have heating of a soil strongly. When you are heating strongly, then it is important to observe changes in the color of the solid being heated, effect of litmus papers, effect on burning or a glowing splint, color of gases produced. So here we have a sample procedure. Take a spatula full of solid K, an example, in a boiling tube, heat it strongly, and test the gases produced using a moist litmus papers. That is both blue and red. So before you dip that litmus paper into the mouth of that boiling tube or the test tube, you have to moisten it. So expected observation, if you get a white solid changing to orange when hot and yellow on cooling, then you need to know the conclusion or the inference for that is lead ions present. Or when you get a white solid changing to yellow when hot and white on cooling, then the cation present here is uh, zinc ions. You get blue solid changes to black, the inference is copper two ions present. You observe brown gas produced, then the inference is a nitrate ion present. If you observe a wet blue litmus paper changing to red, it means acidic gas produced. When you observe wet red litmus paper changing to blue, then it means ammonium ions present, or here you can say a basic gas produced. Now that, that preliminary test is a dissolution or dissolving of a salt in a water. This one is uh, usually uh, done to identify the presence or absence of colored ions, the presence of a soluble salt and insoluble salts. We have here a sample procedure. One, take spatula full of solid B, an example, in a boiling tube and add about 10 milliliter distilled water and you shake well. Now expected observation, remember you are taking a solid, you are putting in a boiling tube and you are adding uh, 10 ml of distilled water, you shake the mixture. The observation that you can get is this solid may dissolve in that distilled water to form a colorless solution or this solid may partially dissolve in that water to form two layers. That is maybe a colorless filtrate and a white residue. So what is the expected observation here? If you get solid dissolves to form a colorless solution, then it means the inference that you are supposed to write here is uh, colored ions absent. Why do you say absent? Because here we get colorless solution. And the colored ions which are absent here usually are copper two ions, ion two ions, ion three ions. But if you are unable to write this formula, don't commit yourself. Just write colored ions, absent, full stop. Now, if you get solid dissolves to form a blue solution, then it means now copper two ions present. 
Now, what if the solid dissolves in distilled water and it forms a green solution? Now, you need to know that it is copper 2 ion or ion 2 ions present. You see, there are some copper 2 salts which are green in color. So here you have to also mention it. Now, sample procedure 2. You take a spatula full of solid C in a boiling tube and you add about 10 ml distilled water and you shake well and you filter it. Now, once you are told filter, it means now that salt is made up of two salts. One is soluble and the other one is insoluble. So meaning the insoluble is going to form a residue while the soluble is going to form a filtrate. Now the expected observation here is it says solid uh, partially dissolves in distilled water to form a white residue. That's if you see a white residue, you may see a black residue. So you write what you see there and a colorless filtrate. But if the filtrate is blue, you will say a blue filtrate, a green filtrate, and so on. So the inference here is you say uh, probably soluble and insoluble salt present. Now that brings us to the end of our lesson. For more videos, subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you for watching.